3i Atlas is an interstellar object that's currently passing through the solar system. It's received a lot of attention as possible alien technology. We already talked about this some months ago, but the more data we have of this object, the more unusual it has become. 3i Atlas was discovered on July 1st by the Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile. It's called 3i because it's got three eyes. Just checking if you're listening. It's called 3i because it's the third interstellar object we've ever seen. Astrophysicists think it doesn't come from within our solar system because they can calculate where it came from. It's clearly not a bound object in the solar system. It's also very unlikely to have come from the Oort cloud. That's a roughly spherical swarm of small icy objects that surrounds the solar system. On occasion, some object from the Oort cloud falls into the solar system and sometimes that makes a comet. But objects from the Oort cloud have a very small initial velocity and that doesn't fit to 3i Atlas. This is why astrophysicists are confident it really came from far away. But just what is it? Most astrophysicists think it's a comet that's a body mostly made of ice which starts evaporating as it gets closer to the sun, which then creates the characteristic comet tail. But if it's a comet, it's an odd comet. In a study that just appeared on the archive, astrophysicists report that 3A Atlas is shedding nickel and iron at a rate they call exceptional. It also emits carbon dioxide and water in a ratio that researchers have called unusual and that, some say, would fit to being exhaust from a propulsion system. Yet another recent paper found that the object changes the polarization of light in a way that they call unprecedented among asteroids and comets. Yet another oddity is that, despite still being far away from the Sun, 3i Atlas has developed a tail that's pointing towards the Sun rather than away from it. Astrophysicists have described this as not common and possibly observed for the first time. All this comes after 3A Atlas was found to be on an unusual trajectory, almost in the plane of our solar system, coming close to three planets, Mars, Jupiter and Venus. It'll reach its closest approach to the Sun on October 29th, pretty much on the opposite side of the Sun as we are, and it's moving unusually fast. Some have argued that it doesn't seem to be tumbling around as much as one would expect, or that it seems to have some self-illumination. But these claims are really far out there, maybe somewhere in the Oort cloud. Still, even if we take only what we read in the astrophysics papers, this sounds suspicious, doesn't it? Unusual, unprecedented, exceptional, observed for the first time. How many oddities does it take for an object to warrant extra scrutiny? So what are we to make of this? Let's start with a question of how unusual the object actually is. For this, we have to ask unusual compared to what? This is only the third interstellar object we've ever seen. We don't have much to compare it to. Yes, it's the fastest of those three, but so what? Why is it so close to the plane in which the planets lie? Quite possibly because if it wasn't, we wouldn't have seen it. Why does it get so close to these three planets? Let me ask you in return, if this was a deliberately chosen and designed orbit, why does it stay away from Earth, the one planet in the habitable zone? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe they're afraid of us and trying to hide? Well, they're not doing a good job at it, do they? That leaves the possibility that it's a piece of space junk. Personally, I think it's highly likely that there are other intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. They almost certainly have explorer missions, and more importantly, there must be lots of tech debris flying around in interstellar space. That a broken alien spaceship might just drift through our solar system is unlikely, but not impossible. I think it's a hypothesis we should seriously consider. Let me be clear, we have no evidence that 3i Atlas is alien technology. The most plausible explanation is that it's a comet different from those we've seen before. But I worry that astrophysicists may be too eager to dismiss the alien tech possibility. I worry about this because scientists tend to overstress type 2 errors and typically ignore the risk of type 1 errors. A type 2 error is when you have a hypothesis that's false 
else, but you don't reject it. Vaccines cause autism is a typical example. Scientists are all over these errors all the time. Whenever they say no, science has not shown this or that, they're coming after type 2 errors. Basically, they have a big hammer labelled insufficient evidence and they enjoy using it. A type 1 error, on the other hand, is when you have a hypothesis that's true and you erroneously reject it. Bacteria can cause stomach ulcers was an example of a type 1 error. These errors can persist in science for a long time because a hypothesis that's been rejected is one that doesn't attract attention among scientists anymore. They tend to not think about the consequences of failing to acknowledge a truth. So this is what I worry about when it comes to alien technology. Not looking at a piece of alien tech because we don't want our lip to be right could be the single biggest mistake that our civilization can ever make. I don't think 3i Atlas is alien technology, but I think it's good that we're talking about it. If we ever actually observe alien tech in the science literature, it'll be called exceptional, unusual and Please see supplementary figure 7 where we panic quietly. Quantum mechanics, algorithms, statistics sounds scary, but don't let yourself be intimidated. Have a look at the courses on Brilliant because I found them to be great at breaking down complex ideas into interactive lessons that anyone can follow. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.